to wear our pink in honor of breast cancer awareness month. And we're grateful that Sister Verizonda Walker is here. Amen. To share her testimony and to share her story. Amen. As we bring awareness uh, to this uh, cancer, and we thank God for what he is doing in her life. And at this time, I'm going to yield to her and she's going to come. And then I'll be back with a few more acknowledgments and special presentations. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. To God, a pastor, and everybody in the team today. Um, I just want to go over some basic information about breast cancer awareness this month. Um, of course, most of you guys know my story. Um, let me get the exact name. Uh, invasive ductal carcinoma in situ grade high stage three breast cancer. So there are several different types of breast cancer out there and none is greater than the next. Uh, we need to make sure that we are sharing awareness with everyone, not just with men and women, but everyone, because this fight affects us all. Um, my cancer journey actually started off nothing about cancer at all. Um, I actually went to my PCP and we were inquiring about like my weight gain and why I wouldn't stay down, why I had to work out like crazy for the, for the uh, weight to stay down. So we actually ended up running, running a few tests and it comes to find out I had a thyroid issue. So that was the actual resolution to their problem. But uh, during that same conversation, we were having a con uh, conversation about my family history, about my grandmother passing due to cancer, and about her mother passing due to cancer. So my doctor actually recommended that I get a mammogram, in which normally they don't recommend you start getting mammograms until you're 40. Um, I'm 36, diagnosis stage three, no telling how long I've had it. Um, we get educated to do self-breast exams, but we don't really know what that means unless we're, unless we're in the medical field. Um, that's one thing that I wanna bring awareness to everyone, to make sure that you're doing your self-checks and make sure you're getting your mammograms. And literally within two weeks, I got a call from a specialist saying that we needed to go ahead and do a biopsy. We completed the biopsy. At that time, this was my new surgeon who actually was like, oh, the girl that threw off the red flag on the first mammogram. And then sure enough, a week later, I was diagnosed. And she was like, oh my gosh. She was like, I really didn't think this was gonna happen. So from there, we did the mammograms. I was diagnosed July 7th of 2021. We got my port installed. I did 16 rounds of IV chemo, which the IV chemo only shrunk down 1.7 centimeters. So then we were required to do the DMX, so I had to get both of my breasts removed. From there, we went to 28 radiation sessions, countless labs, countless tests. I don't know how many PET scans I got, uh, but it's a, it's a process. And if we can prevent anyone, if we can prevent one person from being able to go through this, that's what I want to do. Amen. 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 Currently, I'm doing six months of oral chemotherapy, and I did go into remission on July the 6th of this Amen. year. Amen. 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 All my family, all my friends, all of my church, you guys have been so supportive of this whole process. Um, I want to make sure that we point out and have all of the cancer survivors, anyone that was affected by cancer, to stand up. Because this is your day, this is your time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Amen. 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 Now, I basically made myself an advocate of breast cancer. Um, I gave, just wanted to give some basic information because there's so much info out there. This will be out in the foyer. Um, one main important part is that one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in that lifetime. So we literally count one to eight it, the people in the church. Then well, at least one of us may be diagnosed. A lot of people don't know that that chance. They say the millions and the numbers, but when you look at it and break it down to one to eight, it makes a reality set in. Of course, they talk to you with your doctor about getting your screenings at 40. If you have any family history, I say get checked. 
Amen. Sometimes you have to go through different obstacles. I'm no medical professional. Y'all can ask Dr. Vera for that. Uh, <laughs> but we can find the information for you guys. Uh, this basically just shows uh, how the doctor can uh, identify your stages. And then, of course, this is another good breakdown. Um, out of every 100 women that get a uh, breast cancer scan, 90 of them will be told that their mammograms are normal. Um, 10 of them will be asked to return for additional mammograms. Six will be reassured that their uh, mammograms are normal. Two of them will be asked to return in six months, and two will be recommended to have a biopsy. Things that cancer can't do. It's so limited, but everybody thinks it's so powerful. But as long as you're strong and you have a, a, a solid foundation, you can get through it. Yeah, cancer makes your hair fall out. Yeah, it makes you sick. It makes your red blood count cells go down. I mean, all your blood uh, count cells go down. But what cancer can't do is it cannot cripple love. It cannot shatter hope. It cannot corrode faith. It cannot generate peace. It cannot destroy confidence. It cannot kill friendship. It cannot shut out memories. It cannot silence courage. It cannot reduce eternal life, it cannot quench the spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's give Sister Mary Zonda a hand. Don't stay right there for us if you need to have some presentations for you. Amen. We are encouraged by her fight and by her faith. Amen. She shows up to worship as often as she possibly can when she's feeling well. Amen. Uh, she still pays her tithe and she still Amen. participates uh, with us. Amen. Amen. As a member of our church. And we are grateful uh, for the connection that we have with her. When she uh, mentioned to me last year that she was diagnosed with it, I told her that she would not fight alone. Great uh, Star Baptist Church. Church family will fight with her. And it's been a fight, amen. Uh, but she still has faith in God. God is honoring her faith. And she is a living testimony that God is greater than cancer, amen. See in Christ, as my father would say, is greater than the sea in cancer, amen. Along this journey, she's used this opportunity to bless others last year. Uh, she wanted to bless other cancer patients at the Mary Bird Cancer Center right here in Covington. And so we purchased care packages last year uh, for them and she's doing the same this year. Our church has committed to 25 care packages. The amount of the care packages are $10 and immediately after service she will be in our coffee shop and we ask that you will sponsor at least two care packages amen for those who have Mary Bird receiving treatment amen we want to make sure that she goes beyond her her goal amen also our health ministry Dr. Vera is coming we have a presentation for you on today on behalf of um, the church and the health ministry we want to let her know that we continue to support her. Amen. We continue to support her, not just in words, but also in deeds. Amen. So this is a small gift of token from the church to say we love you and that we will always be a part of your team. Yes. Always. And we also have another gift that we're going to ask everyone else to understand what we're doing for her. Um, most of us know when you're feeling well, the last thing you can do is on behalf of um, the church and the health ministry, we want to let her know that we continue to support her. Amen. We Amen. continue to support her, not just in words, but also in deeds. Amen. So this is a small gift of token from the church to say we love you and that we will always be a part of your team. Yes. Always. And we also have another gift that we're going to ask everyone else to understand what we're doing for her. 
Um, most of us know when you're feeling well, the last thing you can do is get up and cook. That's right. um, <laughs> not <I> like cooking. <laughs> Even for those who don't like to cook, it, it can be a task. And when she was talking about her accounts being low and feeling tired, you know, that causes a lot of stress. She I mean, has children to take care of, and they got to eat. Yeah. Um, so we have to be practical, and we have to be loving in deeds. So what we have done is... Um, we've decided that we're going to try to do her a month of meals in two months if possible. Yeah. So that she will not have to cook. So I met with some members of the church at the church last week, and we actually have a calendar. And in this calendar, we're asking people to sign off on a date that you will be able to provide a meal. Now, for those of you who feel like, oh, I'm not a cook, that's okay, because there are a lot of us who may not be in the area or don't want to cook. So we're asking you to provide a gift card from someplace where she can have a meal picked up Amen. for herself and her kids. Amen. So currently we have all the way through the 25th of October completed. Amen. There are Amen. two families who decided they're going to actually cook our home cook meal. And I'm going to give, we're going to give her the calendar with everybody's date and names. So for the next two weeks, just about it, we already have all of these gift cards that families have donated so that she can get a meal on those days. And we're gonna have this calendar. And I'm just gonna start at the passing around after the sermon, because I don't wanna interrupt the pastor. And if you've not had the opportunity to sign, I'm gonna ask you to sign and let her know what day you're gonna either get her a meal or bring the gift cards to church next week. But again, we want her to know that we support her not only in words, but in deeds. And thank her, because her personal testimony says more than any of us could ever say. Amen. 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 So we love her. Amen. Amen. Dr. Miller, I can't cook, but my wife can, and so you can put your wife and I down for the 26th of October. Amen. 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 We want to make sure that we feel the calendar of it. Let's fill this calendar up right quick. All right. The whole month of November was covered by Sister Gail Gordon. Amen. Good time, month of November. Let's, let's, let's take care of October right now. We need to fill this calendar. Come on. Be great. October is done. All right. Amen. October is done. Amen. So therefore, if you, so what, you what, what we can do now is, is if you want to plant a seed into her life, um, since the meals are covered, if you want to plant a seed into her life, just slip it in her hand after service, amen. If not today, next couple of days, the upcoming weeks, just let her know uh, that we're praying for her, encourage her, and let her know that we're in this fight with her as well. Thank you, Sister Verizondo. Amen for sharing your testimony and being so handy about uh, what God is blessing you to go through. Amen. Amen. As I've shared with her, we are believing God for ultimate victory and healing. Amen. Amen. Because we serve an awesome and almighty God. Amen.